Hi again, folks. Thanks again for joining me for another Alan Holdsworth lesson video. I think this is my 20, 21st one. Uh, if you guys are enjoying them, I'll still do them. Uh, I hope you guys aren't getting sick of them, but I only have a handful left, so uh, there is sort of a uh, an end date to this that I would at least think would be good lessons. Anyway, as I said in the last video, I've kind of been ignoring the IOU album, so I decided uh, to start doing some more of those. So today, I'm going to do Checking Out. Uh, this song actually... I don't think it's really too bad. It's got a couple of really weird stretches in there, but um, because of one of the beautiful things about guitar is that sometimes you can move things to different places, this song's actually relatively simple. Uh, there's some weird chords in there, um, but I think it'll be a pretty good lesson. And um, if you want something that's a little bit more challenging, not something super difficult or super weird, this might actually be a pretty good song to sort of uh, try out just to get a feel for some of these uh, weirder chords and stuff, just to dip your toe in the water a bit. So, anyway, here's checking out. So this song really doesn't have a lot of different parts to it. Uh, so understanding the song and the structure is actually relatively simple compared to some of the other ones I've done, like uh, Zarabeth or uh, House of Mirrors. It just seems to be all over the place. More of his earlier stuff, stuff with vocals, a little more structure between verse, pre-chorus, chorus, stuff like that. So uh, the beginning of the song, which I guess would be technically the chorus, is pretty simple. It was kind of hard to hear and figure out, but uh, I'm pretty sure this is this is it. Not that it's hard um, uh, harmonically to hear. It's really to make sure you get the the right voicing. And it's so simple that I'm not even going to put the chord chart up there. It's really a B power chord. And then the first time you play, it's just a B power chord, and then you add the low E the second time, so it sort of makes it like a like a E sus two. playing like a, a sus2 with the B so you're adding in a C sharp as a, that little melody so you're playing a B C sharp whoops and then a little quicker which is just E D sharp C sharp and then at the end it's that uh, B and then an open E. So now we get to the verse of the song. So the first chord is actually an A minor major 7 chord. And it's really played like this, not barred, because it's, it will lead better into the next chord. So you're actually using your second finger on C here. So you're using uh, your second finger on C, your third finger on uh, G sharp, and then your pinky on E. little bit and it's just a slight movement with your hand to here now you're playing an A flat major 7 sus 2 chord or basically a E flat major with an A flat in the bass. Uh, I've seen this chord used on other places. Um, it's not often that he Alan uses this uh, variation. It's kind of in like above and below. Kind of the same kind of uh, chord on the on the bottom so a minor major 7, to A flat major 7, sus 2, and you move that chord all the way up to C. You can also play that down here, but it's actually played up here and it's still pretty easy to do. Now the next chord is also kind of strange, but keeping your hands like this actually is going to make a little bit more sense because now you're playing this. And as you can see coming from uh, this chord here, your third finger is basically staying in the same spot, and so is um, so is your first finger. You're just sort of inverting your second and, and uh, second finger and pinky around from here to here. So now you actually have a A diminished triad with an added nine with the B here, and you move that up to C, completing it. So now it just goes from uh, A diminished add nine to A diminished. And then the next chord is. Now, you see, if you've seen my earlier videos, uh, Alan used to use this chord pretty frequently. You don't see it that often. It's really a C sharp major with the add 11 in the bass, or a C sharp with a uh, G in the bass. Pretty strange kind of chord. But I think that's the best name for it. Then you go to uh, 
uh, sorry, D diminished with the add nine, the same chord as before and the same um, resolution where you take the nine and you move it up to the minor third. And then you play, so instead of doing an add sharp 11, it's now an add 11, you're playing an E flat major triad with the A flat and the bass. So just to start over, just so you hear how uh, everything goes, A minor major seven, Flat major seven sus two, C major seven sus two, A diminished add nine to uh, uh, sorry a D flat major add sharp eleven, B diminished add nine to uh, E flat uh, add sharp eleven. Uh, now for this part, I'm gonna talk about at least why this this part's pretty strange and also some of the difficulty that I have in sort of like transcribing some of Alan's stuff. So I'm just going to cut the video here to uh, make sure I have enough time to cover it. So this chord sequence is a little bit wacky, so I decided I wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about it, and then I'll play through it a little bit uh, afterwards. So the first chord is this, and you can see that my first finger is actually barring across the strings, but I'm actually not playing those. I, the chord really starts on this G. So the notes that you have here, you have a G, an E, an F, and a B flat. Now, some people might see that G, uh, G, B flat, and F and say, oh, there's a minor 7, and then you're adding in this 13 here making it a G minor 13 with that sort of uh, tension substitution that we talked about in the unmerry round replacing the 5 with the 6 or the 13 here. Which is fine, you can call this a G minor 13 chord, but where, where it goes to, um, I think the chord, eventually where, the, where that sequence goes, it makes more sense to actually think of it as a F major 9 sus 4, which is, might be a little strange. We have the F, the sus 4 here, the major 7, and then the um, the 9 here. And then what you do is you take your third finger off, this um, B flat, and you're moving it to A. And then you have this F uh, major 9. This chord you actually see in, um, in a lot of Allen songs, and it's actually in um, Water on the Brain. This chord is also played like up here. That's why they sound the same. And he plays it, he actually plays that voicing higher up. I can't on this guitar, but you just have to take my word for it. Or you can just watch the video. So anyway, F major nine sus four, moving to to moving the sus four to the major third. Then what you do is you take this chord and then you move it down a minor third. So now you have a D um, major nine sus four, and this is where that chord gets really weird because I'm looking at my hand through the camera. You can see you're kind of like, that, that's really hard to play. There's an easier way of playing this. This is the way that Alan does. So, now this is why I'm not really a fan of standard notation so much, which might sound like blasphemy for some people. I'm not saying it's completely uh, not important, but uh, using tablature or at least some sort of chord chart will allow you how these things are being played. Of course you could do it in standard notation, but I like both. Um, so if I was to actually write this out in standard notation, I wouldn't have any issue, but the problem was, how was Alan actually playing this just by listening to it? Nothing really made sense. So that first chord had, I had correct, the, the D major uh, 9 sus 4. But now from this, I hear an F. Where's that F supposed to be played? Over here or over here? So I'm thinking maybe you're using your pinky and barring this with this note here. Well, that is way too hard. Maybe it's somehow being played up here. I couldn't quite figure it out. But I had the notes right. It clearly was an F that was being added. So I said, all right, let's just get that out. Maybe the next chord will help and give more of an idea of what's going on. So what happens is that F is still ringing out and you just play that G. And now the chord is this, F, and then you have this um, F sharp here being rung out, and then it goes to E. But how are you playing E and F at the same time here? 
but the, it, nothing made sense. The notes were right. It was very confusing. So um, I was racking my brain trying to figure out all the different finger combinations. Maybe it's something easier. Maybe it's played over here. Um, so I went to my friend uh, German, who helped me out in these uh, instances, and we both sort of came to the conclusion with a little bit of help that he's tapping. He's tapping one note in there. And this is why when I do these videos, I try to use some sort of visual confirmation and as much information as I can because some of these things are so wacky. Alan was quite the innovator. He would try to think of different ways of playing the guitar or adding things that without um, some sort of visual aid, it's really hard to figure out what's going on. Maybe you guys are smarter than me and kind of just by me playing with we're able to figure it out, but I didn't hear it as a tap and it really, uh, I was really having difficulty with it. So, you're playing this D, 9, says 4, and then you use your right hand to tap the F. Then you move that chord down a half step, but you, you sort of remove that 13, so you now have a D sharp, a G sharp. You have your right finger still on F, and your first finger on an F sharp, and you sort of strum it with your thumb. And then you move your first finger down to E, and then it goes to A. So that is why I couldn't figure out all that weirdness between the G, F, F sharp, and E. Uh, now naming this is also going to be a little bit strange too. So when we have that major 9 sus 4, we're tapping an F. So what I was thinking, what makes the most sense to me is, if you're thinking of D as this root, you're now adding in this F, sharp, uh, F which is the minor 3rd. So when you have this chord together, it's kind of weird. Now I can't play this. There's an easier way of doing this. So uh, I'm gonna, just gonna try to show it to you as best as I can. We have thinking of D as your root. We're tapping the minor third. We have the 11 up here. We have the nine here, and then we have the C sharp that we're playing with our pinky, which is the major seven. So I would say that this is like the upper structure of a D minor major 11 chord. Of course, you're replacing the D root with that tapped note on your, uh, on your right hand. Then when you move that chord a half step down, you have a D, a D sharp or an E flat, A flat, F, and a G flat. Now this changes the complexity of the chord because if, if you're, you're trying to think of well, where's the root here, I think the best way of thinking of this chord is probably uh, an E flat minor triad. You have an E flat. On a, on a, uh, an 11 here, well not an E flat tri, but you have an E flat and a, and the minor third and the 11 and you're tapping in the two, uh, the 9. So this is kind of like a minor add 9 add 11, but the way that it resolves when it moves down, when your first finger moves down a half step and it goes to E, you can think of this as an E, um, E major 9 chord, and actually this chord is used also in, um, this voicing is also used in uh, Word on the Brain for the, the higher stabs, the, um, that kind of thing. I don't know if you can see it, but I can do it down here. It's that same chord, it's the same voicing, but it's now just on the top four strings. So I would say that this is actually this, this first chord, sort of like an E flat major 7 with a flat 9. And then you use your first finger to go down a half step with now the flat 9 going to E, E major 9, and then finally, finally to A. So, yeah, it's a lot of gobbledygook there. Really kind of challenging. That was the one thing that I had some, some sort of difficulty seeing. Like, how can I call these chords what they are? Uh, but now I'm actually going to uh, show you the easier way of playing that, Alan doesn't play, he plays it down there. And you can kind of hear because the notes are, are very uh, sharp uh, in terms of their sound, but I actually find it easier playing it up on the middle four string, so I'll show you how to do that now. What's good about showing you the chords over here is that these chords, the way that they're played on these middle four strings, is actually how Alan uses them more frequently, especially, I think, later in his career. So instead of playing this um, F major 9 sus 4 up here, you can actually play it like this, which is a bit easier because you're using your first finger to bar, and now you don't have to worry about using that weird stretch between your third finger and pinky. You can have the 
B and G strings work in your favor. The G, uh, E, F, and B flat. So there you have that chord. Once again, you can think of it as a G minor 13 or that F major 9 sus 4. Take your first finger, uh, take your middle finger off, I'm sorry, and then you have an F major 9 just like in um, Water on the Brain. And then, of course, the other major 9 chords. Um, so then you move that chord down as well to here. You take your index finger again, and now you're tapping that F here. So now you have that um, D minor major 11. Then you move your first finger down like this, and you strum with your thumb, and then move that first finger down to E, and A. So much easier to play, and I'll, I'll play it without talking. Much easier. I don't know how well you were able to see that in the video, but um, at least I can play it. Uh, also, the one thing that's a little bit troubling here when you're playing is that your first finger might have a tendency to touch the B string as you strum with your thumb. So you kind of have to turn with it. Or maybe sort of play the, the note on an angle a little bit like this instead of like that where it might mute the string. And then just a regular old A major chord. And after that, back to... repeats exactly the same way except now there's a little bit more tacked on so I'll cover that now and of course the solo and ending sections so after that bit the song basically repeats itself exactly the same way just has a different ending as typical for most Allen stuff so I'll just play up to where it changes. And after that little tapping part, this entire section is one chord. It's this shape. You can think of it as a minor 7 sharp 5 or a uh, add 9, a major add 9 chord. I'm going to call it a major add 9 chord because it makes uh, more sense to me. So we have uh, the first chord is a um, A flat major add 9 and that goes to D flat. Also the rhythm here in terms of like the the um, the time signature is a little strange. It goes between like 4-4 four, four, and 3-4 for certain chords. Um, it's one of those things that I know by feel, but I'm not going to try to count them out because I know I'll, I'll mess it up. So, uh, A flat major add 9 to D flat major add 9. And again. Then again. And then from here, it goes to F major add 9 to D major add 9. this little section that goes in right before the solo. It's all these add 11, add sharp 11 chords. These are really uh, tricky. Alan plays them like this. I have no idea how he fits all of his fingers in there. I guess his fingers are so long. Uh, I actually, I have to cheat a little bit. I bar the, these two strings, the uh, D and the G string, and then I use my pinky for the B string. But this is how it goes. It's a C major with an add 11. Then it moves to A major with an add 11. And the, the way that the, the, the melody works is that it's like uh, it plays the 11 with the chord and then the 3 and then the second time it's the 3 then the 11. And also I think this, this whole part is in 7, 8 time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, yeah it's in 7. So C major at 11, A major at 11, then a B flat major with an add sharp 11 all the way to an F major at 11 and then G major at sharp 11 so all together that sounds like this it's as good as it's going to get that part's really tricky for me 
Then it comes time for the solo, which I'll discuss um, afterwards. So that part repeats exactly the same way again after the solo with both sections, with the goes into the tapping section the whole thing it repeats exactly the same way up into uh, until you get to the uh, the add nine section so uh, I'll just go from that add nine section to the outro so the add nine section starts out the same way and then instead of stopping here like it does before the solo it has this extra note, and then it goes, and now you have a G major add nine, D major add nine, and then it goes to G major add nine, but now an octave lower. D major add nine, G major add nine, and then uh, B major add nine, and then you use the bar to go down. I don't have my bar, and then back to um, A flat major add nine. So that whole section sounds like this. Uh. Then comes the ending of the song. Uh, the song sort of starts out at like the, the beginning of the verse, modulated up uh, a fifth, but a little bit different. E minor major 7 to E flat major 7 sus2, just like before, but now we have this C major 7. It's sort of a, a, an unusual voicing, especially for Alan. You don't really see this much. Most people, when they play that major 7, they play it like this, but in this case, the fifth is played on the A string. And then that chord again, I call it D major at 9. Now you have this interesting little section. Whoops. I have no idea how Alan reaches for some of these chords, because even with my smaller hands, even I have trouble with it. Uh, this chord, D major with the flat 7 on the bottom, and that moves up a, a whole step to E7, D7, E7. And then this chord which uh, you could think of as a couple of different ways. Uh, you could think of this as an A minor 6, which it is. Um, also, minor 6 chords can also be thought of as um, minor 7 uh, flat 5 chords. So this would be F sharp minor 7 flat 5. Uh, and another way you can think of this chord uh, is as up here we have a little dominant triad. We have a D7, but with an E on the bottom. So we have sort of like a, a, another tension substitution where you're substituting the 9 of the chord from the 1. So this is like almost like a 9 chord, a D9. And then that chord gets played up a whole step. So I would call this uh, a minor 7 flat 5. And this is why. Because in each time we're having the root on the E string. So D7, E7, F sharp minor 7 flat 5. G sharp minor 7 flat 5, and then the last chord is A minor major 7 with the major 7 on the bottom. And if you're not familiar with this, that whole thing belongs to A melodic minor. This whole thing is diatonic to A melodic minor. And what's interesting is because of this dominant part on the top, these little chords up here almost sound like a 4, like a dominant 4, to a dominant 5, to a 1 chord. Very slick. Uh, but that's how that ending section goes. Like I said, th these chords are really hard to play to really get your fingers. My first finger is almost like sideways. I'm going to see if I can show the camera here. Yeah, as you can see, to get in there. That's how he plays it. I mean, I can't do it any other way. Maybe if you want a bar, you could do it like this. But, uh, yeah, that's how it's done. So that's it. That's the whole song. It's actually pretty simple. Uh, even the solo section is really simple, so uh, I'm going to talk about that now.
So the solo section, as I said, is pretty simple. It's got uh, one interesting thing in it. So the beginning part is just an F power chord. Real simple. It kind of has like a like a like an odd time feel, but I think it's all all uh, three four or six four. One two three four five six. And then it goes to B flat. And then you actually change now the bottom two notes, go down a whole step, and now you have the sus2 chord. B flat, A flat sus2. And then it does the same thing, but now in G. G, F sus2. And then regular E power chord, repeats again the same way. that doesn't do the sus2 part, it just plays the power chords. That's all over that uh, diminished lick. And what's interesting is Al over that E, Alan's thinking of the half whole diminished scale. And that lick at the end that he plays is part of the E uh, half whole diminished scale. And he talks about the in his uh, instructional day, the E with the little two circles. Uh, and he actually plays a lick here that's harmonized. Now, uh, some of you might not be familiar with the diminished scale. The diminished scale is actually very symmetrical, and it's symmetrical in minor thirds. So, um, in minor thirds, in flat fives, and in sixes. They're all the same sort of, uh, you always have these minor thirds. So, uh, Alan sometimes likes to take that shape and use it. And when most people use the diminished scale, or like this diminished arpeggio, they're playing it in stacked in two minor third intervals, and then sort of playing that up. Uh, but what Alan's actually doing here is that he, you can actually play that scale uh, with the two sec thirds, almost, oh, not almost, symmetrically between these top um, four strings, D, G, B, and E. So you would have uh, like 12, 15, 18, 12, 15, 18, 12, 15, 18. 12, 15, 18, and he's harmonizing that A minor third down. Now obviously that's not the lick, but it's a symmetrical sort of lick, just like a lot of times when people are learning fast runs, it's like a little uh, pattern that's um, amplified just through the strings, just um, you know, played between two strings or sort of like a... Um, an interval grouping, and that's sort of what's happening here. The first few notes are the only things that don't really repeat. It just does 12, 18, uh, 12, 15, 18. And then from here, it's always going to be 12, 15, 18 for all of these notes on, on all these strings. So you're starting out like that, and then uh, Alan does this a lot when he's soloing. He'll go from his first finger to his pinky, back to his first finger, and then up the scale. And then you do the same thing on the B string. And then from here is the trickiest part. You actually play the 18th fret on the B string and then the 18th fret on the E string. And then from here all the way back down, you're playing every other note in that pattern. Like um, in thirds almost, but in that shape. So you're doing 18, 12, 15. Then on the next string, 18. And then back on the top E string, 12. And then... Um, 15th fret on the B string, and then that physical pattern is repeated throughout the strings. And then once you get to this 15, you then start the lick over again, but now you do 12, 15, uh, 12, I'm sorry, 15, 18. I'm just picking all the notes because um, I have it on clean guitar. Uh, if I'm going to try to play it on distortion. Let's hear how this lick sounds with a little bit of distortion now. Some 
something like that. And like I said, it's harmonized the same way perfectly, a minor third down. <laughs> That's it. The concept is simple, but it's going to be tiring for your hands. But the, you know, what else is new for Alan stuff? So anyway, uh, that's the entire song. Checking out. Really not that, uh, not that tricky, except for a couple of a couple of places. But also that diminished part, you can play however you want. Uh, that's just how he's doing it. I think live he plays that lick, and he actually plays it on the 12th fret. Doesn't play it um, down a minor third on the ninth fret. Uh, so that's it. The next video that I'm going to do is a video. Uh, on, on a song that I wasn't entirely sure if I wanted to do, but uh, it got some votes, and I know a couple of guitar players who I respect uh, asking for it, so uh, let's just say I'm just going to keep it a secret for now. Uh, but I'm going to see if I can release it maybe uh, by next week. So anyway, I hope you guys uh, enjoy this video, and also enjoy the next video that I do. I'm a little uncertain about it, like I said, but uh, if everyone seems to enjoy it, I might do more of those, and then I'll be able to do some more lessons. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Good luck, and have fun practicing.